I wanted to take just a minute to talk about a disturbing trend that's been happening recently where we see a number of public officials and individuals, not necessarily public officials, but many of them are, um, some elected officials, who are misconstruing how our laws work and how our government works. Many of them are actually pointing to Christian fundamentalism and Christian nationalism issues um, to support their claims. Some of them are talking about how our laws are given by God, or our government is given by God, or God ordained. Um, they have different ways of phrasing this. But at the end of the day, really what they're talking about is a theocracy, um, a government that is run by uh, religious leaders or a religious text. And in this country, you know, our laws are driven and derived from our constitution. The constitution really makes up the basis for all of our rights, um, not just those that are enshrined in the Bill of Rights that many people point to, but um, the main f fundamentals of what makes up our legal system um, stems from our constitution. And so when we have these individuals who are misconstruing and, and fundamentally misrepresenting uh, what this country was founded on, what this country represents, and, and how our laws work, it's very disturbing. Um, take this individual who is a former um, deputy sheriff, I understand he's been fired, um, and also a, a minister of some kind, a pastor, I don't know. And he, basically he was arguing that um, we should be, our laws in this country should be following the Bible and the way that the Bible articulates um, who should and should not be punished, including adulterers. He calls for adulterers, kidnappers, rapists, etc. to all be put to death. Um, I wonder if he's a Trump supporter. But more disturbingly, he talks about the LGBTQ community. And he says that, you know, our government, our police, our um, judges, our lawyers, etc., should be going after the LGBTQ community, um, arresting them, putting them on trial, and then ultimately executing them. Enforce the laws because the Bible says the powers that be are ordained of God, and God has instilled the power of civil government to send the police in 2019 out to these LGBT freaks and arrest them and have a trial for them, and if they are convicted, then they are to be put to death. You understand that? Yeah. It is a capital crime that should be uh, uh, carried out by our government. And he says this with such fervor and, and a strong belief in what he's saying. And, and again, he's, he's basing all of this off of the Bible. Um, but he's, he's backing it up and saying that, again, that our laws are derived from God, and so, and our government is derived from God, and there's, therefore, uh, we should be enforcing, quote unquote, the word of God uh, in our laws. And there, therefore, you know, LGBTQ uh, members should be executed. No, there's just a few things. My main background is in genocide and mass atrocities uh, studies and prevention. And in the um, Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, which was created in 1948, which is the, the main text um, when we talk about genocide, the main definition of genocide, the most widely um, respected and, and um, understood definition of genocide in the international community, uh, very clearly articulates that the incitement of genocide um, is also considered a punishable offense. Now, unfortunately, the LGBTQ community isn't one of the protected classes in the Genocide Convention because it was written in 1948, um, and the only classes that were considered were ethnic, national, racial, religious, and national. Um, but if it were written today, you know, many would believe that the you know sexual orientation would be included. And if that were the case, you know, this gentleman inciting uh, basically genocide against the LGBTQ community. Um, arguing that they should be executed solely because of the fact that they are members of the LGBTQ community, they're homosexual, transgender, etc., um, would be incitement of genocide and potentially could be um, found to be so in a, in a court of law. So I just want to make everybody aware of this and aware of you know a lot of this rhetoric that we've been seeing. It's very dangerous. It's very disturbing. Um, but it's, it's more so disturbing. You know, we're always going to see one or two crazies and crackpots out there, you know, arguing for these kinds of things. But it's very disturbing when I, you know, I've seen um, members of the elected community, right, or public officials. There was a, a mayor from Alabama. There was a, a district attorney from Tennessee who said some pretty horrific things about both the LGBTQ community and the Muslim community. He was arguing that Muslims don't have constitutional rights because they don't believe in 
the quote unquote one true God. And as such, um, if you can't, you don't believe in God and our rights are given by God, then they don't get our rights, which is just, again, a fundamental misrepresentation of how our laws work. And this man is a, uh, you know, deputy, um, attorney general or deputy prosecutor or something like that. Uh, it's just very disturbing to see. And just wanted to flag it for everybody. And I'm, I'm sure that many of you have seen these as well. Um, but it's something that we need to be keeping a close eye on because left unchecked, uh, these individuals will, un, you know, I'm sure gain more and more support, um, especially in our current political situation.